Hello everyone and welcome to week five. We are making very good progress in our semester so far. Before we begin the textbook, I have some great news. So good news everyone. The university has relaxed its policy about the class time limit. So from now on, you will have one whole week to finish all of your assignments and quizzes. I know it can be really difficult for students to follow the classes online, and there is a lot of work, so we want to give you a fair chance to do all of your work without losing too many points unnecessarily. Let me explain a little more about this one week deadline. Let's say, for example, you have class on Monday and it starts at 9 a.m. The assignment will begin at 9 a.m. at the beginning of your class. Then you will have one complete week. It will end when the next lecture begins, so on the next Monday at 9 a.m. This gives you lots of time to complete your work and if you look at our attendance quizzes, you have noticed that the questions have become shorter. There are only 10 questions. You have an unlimited amount of time to answer the quiz. And you can also retry the quiz an unlimited amount of times before you submit your final score. So some students asked me, which score um, are you going to use my first score, my final score? I will use your final score. The attendance quiz is a great way to practice the questions many times and really learn something that you made a mistake about. So I want to make this as easy as possible for you guys. All right, now let's look at today's lesson. We're going to continue unit two. Oh, one more thing. Because the midterm exam has been canceled and so many changes have been made in our classes, your class grade will not be graded on a curve anymore. So in our first lesson, on the syllabus, we have a grade curve like this. There was a maximum number of A students that would be allowed in a curved class. So because you are an intermediate course, the maximum was 45%. So for example, if we had 10 students with 90% and higher, only four would be allowed to have an A in a curved class. Now, we will not have a curve. You will have absolute grading. What does that mean? It means that your grade comes directly from your final score. Your grade is not affected by other students. So, whatever scores you get on your tests, on your assignments, on your exams, you add the total, that is your final score. Nothing will change it will not be adjusted, it will be direct. And you can see this table that explains how each grade is decided. So if you really want an A+, you need a very, very high grade uh, at the end of the semester. But there is a big range for different kinds of A grades. Okay, so, Hopefully that is very encouraging and exciting news. If I were a student, I would be very happy. Okay, great. So two very good changes that are happening now. Some students have asked me about their grades so far. They want to know what is my participation score? What is my attendance score right now? Usually in a real class, I give each student a paper with a little update of their grade, but because we are online, I'm worried about distributing the information um, privately. I don't want to make a mistake and send your grades to the wrong student. So I'm still figuring out the 
best way to send you this information. So please be patient and hopefully I can send that to you soon. Thank you for waiting so far. Okay, now we can begin our textbook lesson. Today we will finish Unit 2, our planet, well, energy and our planet. So, last week we learned a grammar point, simple present and present continuous tense. You might remember that we use the simple present to talk about routines, facts, things that are always true. And we use the present continuous to talk about things that are happening right now or around right now. We also sometimes use the present continuous to talk about future plans. So to review our grammar point, I'd like you to take out a notebook and write two simple sentences to answer these questions. Number one, what is something that you do every morning? And remember, every morning, this is your routine. So we should use the simple present. And number two, what are you doing today after class? This is a future plan around now. So please use the present continuous. All right, take a moment with your notebook and when you get back, we'll continue our lesson. Okay, great. Hopefully you wrote some good sentences. And if you're not sure, you can always email me and I'm very happy to check your answers and help you edit your writing. Now let's talk about today's topic. Maybe you've heard this word before, zero waste. And there are many different things that we can do to live a zero waste lifestyle. But what is zero waste? Well, zero waste is the philosophy that we should live without creating any trash at all. Everything that we use should be recyclable, degradable, or reusable. So let's take a look at some examples. Maybe you already use a refillable water bottle. This is a good example of something that is reusable. Instead of throwing away many plastic bottles, we use one bottle for a very long time. Maybe you even use a canvas or plastic eco shopping bag. When we reuse a shopping bag, we don't create as much plastic trash. And this is really helpful for our planet. There are other things that we can do too that are a little less common but can be really good for the environment. For example, you can even buy a bamboo toothbrush. Maybe, like most people, you use a plastic toothbrush. We should change our toothbrush once a month. That means in a year, 12 plastic toothbrushes go into the trash, and that's just for one person. But if you buy a bamboo toothbrush, then you can put your toothbrush into the compost and it will turn back into the earth. There are other products that we can use, like shampoo or dishwashing soap. This can protect the health of our water and our oceans. You can even buy biodegradable shoes. These shoes are made by Adidas and they are 100% biodegradable, which means they will return to the earth and completely compost, which is really amazing. Maybe you have a store like this in your city. I don't know any stores like this in Wanju, but if you know one, please tell me about it. I'm very interested. These kinds of stores really want to stop using plastic containers. 
These are stores for people to come with their own reusable buckets or containers or bags so that they can buy in bulk. In bulk means that there is a big, uh, big bucket and you can choose how much you want to buy. It is not packaged, it is loose. We call this in bulk. There are even some stores that let you refill common cleaning products. This is a pharmacy in Czecho, so, uh, in the Czech Republic, and you can refill laundry detergent here and shampoo and conditioner. So have you ever tried a store like this? And would you be interested in trying one? I personally really like this idea. I think it's so good for our planet. There's another uh, person I'd like to talk about. Her name is Lauren Singer. If you go on YouTube, you will find many, many videos about this young woman. She really believes in the power of a zero waste lifestyle. In an experiment, she tried to eliminate all trash from her life. If you look on the wooden box, you'll see a very small jar. This is all of her trash for two years. It's amazing. Now she has opened many stores that are like this, where you can buy in bulk and she sells eco-friendly products that will biodegrade without harming the environment. I really encourage you to look for her on YouTube. I can't share the video right now, but it is really, really interesting and you can learn a lot. So if we want to become zero waste, there are five rules that we should follow. In America and Canada, at least when I was young, we were always told three R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's really good, but there's more that we can do for the environment. So let's take a look. Number one is refuse. And this one is number one because it is the most important step. You have to say no to plastic. Don't buy it. Don't pay for it. Don't use it at all in your life. Just say no. This is the decision that can have the biggest impact on your waste. Number two, reduce. Use less. Use less plastic. Use less disposable products that go in the trash. Try to consume as little as you can. Remember last week we talked about how many planets we need to sustain our lifestyle. I know that I love fashion. I love steak and I love to travel by plane. These are all really bad for the environment. So if everyone lived like me, maybe we would need five Earths to survive. But we can reduce the amount that we eat and the amount that we buy. So for example, I will only eat red meat one day a week. This is a way that we can reduce or use less in our life. Number three, repair and reuse. There are two kinds of people. Let's say you are wearing your favorite jeans and suddenly there's a big rip. What do you do? One, throw it away and buy a new pair. Or two, repair the jeans and wear them again. I think we can agree that the first option, throw it away and buy a new one, is the most popular reaction. But we can change our lifestyle habits to help our planet. Number four is recycle. 
in Korea, we recycle many different kinds of products. In fact, I'm really impressed by South Korea's recycling program. I think it's really amazing and even though I love Canada, I think South Korea's recycling program is much better organized and it's really great to see how many people follow recycling rules. So when we recycle, we take materials and transform them into new objects. We reuse the material. We can recycle something um, through the government by placing all of our plastic in a box outside to be collected, but we can also recycle at home. And I'll show you a little bit about that later. Finally, the last step is rot. This means that we take all of our food trash and turn it into soil again. We want to return it to the earth. So let's look at each one in a little more detail. Number one is refuse. Say no. I think by now you have heard about this. Refuse the straw. There are many products that are pretty easy to refuse like straws, plastic coffee cups, plastic water bottles, and plastic spoons and forks. There are times when they're needed or convenient, but it's also very easy to bring our own alternative. So whenever you can, say no thank you to single-use products like straws and plastic bags. You can bring a metal straw, or you can bring an eco bag. Then just say no to the plastic straw. Number two is reduce. Here I have an image from an Instagram account called Zero Waste Japan. I really like this Instagram account because they show our habit changes very clearly. In this example, they have some restaurant candy, very common. Now they change their habit. Look at the different packaging. Before, we had many small pieces of plastic. Now we have one paper box and no plastic at all. So to reduce, you need to buy less. Choose products that use less plastic. If you're buying cookies and you have two boxes of cookies, should you buy the box that wraps each cookie in its own plastic bag? Or should you buy a box with all of the cookies in one cardboard box? If you want to reduce waste, choose the box with less plastic. Okay, number three, repair and reuse. Here, we have a hot pack or hand warmer. Before, this person used disposable hot packs. These are very popular in Korea too. And every winter, I see so many hot packs go into the trash or on the street. And it really breaks my heart when I see so many hot packs. Now, it's possible to buy a USB hot pack you can recharge it and reuse it many times. You don't need to throw away this hot pack that will only work for a few hours. Instead, buy a reusable alternative. You can also repair our old items. Like I said about the jeans, you can learn to sew and fix your clothes, or you can change them and use them in a different way. So whenever you can, use a reusable product instead of a disposable one. Think about it. How many hot packs do you use every winter? Maybe a lot, right? Okay, number four, recycle. Yes, we can take our plastic and cans and glass and give it to the municipal recycling company and they will recycle it. But we can also recycle at home. 
So in this picture, before, this person used to buy a new towel to clean their house or wash their dishes. Now, instead of buying new, they are going to recycle something and use it in a new way. Here, they decided that they couldn't repair their jeans. They were too damaged. So instead, they cut the material and recycled it. And now they use it as a cloth to clean the house or wipe something. So we can recycle at home by using old items in new ways. And of course, we should always recycle plastic, paper, glass, and cans, and any other kind of metal if you can. Finally, the last stage is rot. We must take our food trash and put it in a separate type of trash. We call this composting. So on the left, we can see the food trash bags that are used in South Korea. If you don't have access to this kind of food trash, you can also create your own composting bin in your garden. This option is really popular in Canada and North America because many people have a backyard and they enjoy gardening. Also, in some parts of North America, there is no food trash collection that is handled by the government. People just put their food trash in the normal trash, which creates a lot of food waste. And food waste in America is a huge problem, especially when you go to a big store like Walmart or Stop and Shop. These grocery stores throw away food in the trash and they don't compost it back into earth or soil. So I really admire South Korea's food trash system. It's amazing how much food trash there is and everyone in Korea cooperates to compost their food trash. And also they collect the liquid trash uh, at a McDonald's or at the cinema. I had never seen that before I went to Korea and I thought that was really amazing. So always remember to separate your food trash and put it back into the earth. Don't do this. Don't throw it in the trash can. Okay, so our first participation work this week is a zero waste checklist. This is really fast and easy. I think it will take you maybe five minutes to finish this work. Go to YSEC and click on the zero waste checklist. We're going to find out how eco-friendly our class really is. So read the list and check all of the things that you do. When you finish, you will see the class results. All of the answers are anonymous, so please be honest with your answer. We're going to see how many habits you already have, or maybe how many you don't have. Okay, so now that we have in our mind the idea of being eco-friendly and reducing our waste, let's talk about today's vocabulary. I'm going to show you an image and then a sentence to show it in context, and then hopefully that will connect into meaningful uh, into something meaningful in your mind. So first, let's take a look at our visual, context, and meaning. Listen and repeat. Practical. Cut back on. Local. Waste. Replace. Keep track of, oh, consume, target, gradual, percent. Okay, so we see our words, how they're spelled. Now let's look at an image of them. We'll look at the exercise later. 
First, we have this really cool tool. Maybe you have one or you've seen one before. This is called a Swiss Army knife. This is a practical tool. A Swiss Army knife is a practical tool for many different situations. Hmm. So think of our context. Tool, many different situations. Hmm. Okay, next word. Ooh, no thank you. That's enough. Cut back on is a verb. My doctor said that I need to cut back on alcohol. Ooh, what do you think it means? Next, hmm, we have a little restaurant or cafe and a map, pin, local, adjective. This local restaurant became famous on KBS. Hmm. Ooh, now we can see a big problem in this restaurant. Waste. It can be a noun or a verb. In America, food waste is a widespread problem. Here, it's being used as a noun, food waste. We can also use it as a verb. In America, they waste a lot of food. Next, out with the old, in with the new. That is an English expression for this word, replace. In order to save energy, I replaced all of my old light bulbs with LED light bulbs. Ooh, this person lost a lot of money. Oh, keep track of, verb. I hired a personal financial advisor to help me keep track of my budgets. Hmm. Keep track of. Next, maybe you've seen this sticker before, especially on your fridge or your washing machine or an appliance like that. This word is consume. Older appliances, especially refrigerators, consume more energy than modern ones. So maybe you can guess what this means. If it's red, not so good. If it's green, that's very good. Next, bing, target. In Costa Rica, nearly 100% of electricity comes from renewable sources. Costa Rica hopes to reach this target within a few years. Really amazing work, Costa Rica. Next, hmm, five years later, we can see he has changed. Gradual. It's important to remember that weight loss is a gradual process. There are no shortcuts. Hmm. Five years, gradual. Finally, percent. Researchers in Iceland say that 50% of patients with coronavirus did not show any symptoms. Hmm. Great. Now we have some more examples of the vocabulary in context. Please read this example in your, note, in your textbook. If you don't have the textbook, you can read it from the PowerPoint. After you finish reading all of the words in context, please continue to exercise B and match the words with their definition. When you come back, we'll check your answers. Okay, let's check your answers now. Hopefully you were able to understand the words thanks to the pictures and the example text. Take a look at the answers here and check your work. Practical, useful in a real situation. To cut back on is to reduce or make less. Local, from or related to the place where you live. 
waste to use too much of something without a good reason replace to put in something new in place of the old one six keep track of to pay attention to what is happening to something seven consume to use eight target a goal or something that you want to do nine gradual happening slowly and finally percent which is parts out of a hundred okay so hopefully you got all of the correct answers now we have a fill in the blank there are two parts to the fill in the blank number one you must put the vocabulary and number two you must add this e m d so read the sentence and then decide if this energy saving idea sounds easy, medium, or difficult to do in your life. Think about your situation. It might be easy for someone else and difficult for you. So don't be shy. Answer honestly according to your life. So for example, don't waste energy by drying your dishes in the dishwasher. Dry them by hand instead of using energy by drying them in the dishwasher. I don't have a dishwasher, so this is really easy. Okay, go ahead and finish the rest of these questions by yourself. And when we come back, we'll check the vocabulary words. Okay, hopefully this gave you some really good ideas of ways to change your lifestyle to reduce energy waste. We are going to check the vocabulary words, but the second part, easy, medium, difficult, we won't check that because everyone's answer might be different. Okay, so let's look at number two. Cut back on your use of hot water by taking a shorter shower. Number three, buy more food that comes from local farms. Food that is produced near your home uses less energy for transportation. Think about all of those exotic fruits like avocados and pineapples and mangoes. How much energy is used to transport them from Mexico, from the Philippines, from Thailand? So pick a local food. Number four, keep track of your electric bills. You can change your habits, but first you need to know what your habits are. So keep track of how much energy you use. Number five, recycle all your cans, bottles, and paper. Recycled materials consume much less energy than new materials, especially materials like metal, we need to dig into the earth and create a lot of pollution to make new metals. So we should always recycle them. Number six, replace all of the light bulbs in your house. Very easy, I think. They're very cheap and easy to buy. Number seven, we need to unplug all of our electronics. Um, they use up to 8% of your electricity bill Wow. Number eight, make gradual changes to your diet. Don't go crazy very suddenly. Make slow changes that you can keep forever. Number nine, for most people it isn't practical. It's not easy or uh, useful to replace everything at the same time. Number ten, set a target or a goal. For example, using public transportation more often. Okay, hopefully you got all of these correct. Now let's talk about energy use. Make a list of all of the electrical items you use in one day. Then underline three items that you need the most. Do this in your notebook and really think about the really important electronic items in your life. I know for me, number one is my Wi-Fi modem. I need my internet. 
And number two is my smartphone. So I guess number three is my TV. Okay, so take a moment, write your answers, and when you come back, we'll start with the listening part. Okay, let's look at the listening for today's lesson. We are going to listen to an informal conversation. Take a look at this person's kitchen. What do you see? Well, maybe you've noticed that there are a lot of electrical appliances. For example, we have a, an oven, we have a coffee maker, microwave, this is a food processor or blender. We have a big, big, very old radio, an iron, a washing machine, and I think this is a vacuum. It looks a little old. I'm not sure. I think it's a vacuum. So there are many different electrical tools or appliances that we use in our life. Now let's listen to some people talk about how they use energy in their life. As we listen, I want you to answer these three questions. Who is talking? How does the man feel? And why does he feel this way? All right, now let's listen to the audio. Listening. An informal conversation. A. Listening for main ideas. Page 37. What's the matter, Dad? You look kind of upset. Well, I am kind of upset. Our energy bill is very high this month. Really? How much is it? <sighs> it's $400, which is a lot higher than usual. Wow, that sounds like a lot. Well, it is a lot. I'd really like to find ways to cut back on how much energy we use. Great. Let's check your answers. Number one, who is talking? The father of a family is talking, and he's talking to his son and his daughter. How does the man feel? He feels upset. He's upset about their energy use. Why does he feel this way? Because his electric bill was too high, too expensive. Okay, now that we know the general idea of this listening file, let's listen to it again and try to pay attention to the details. Look at this chart. Which ideas do they talk about in this audio file? Check the answers that you hear. If you don't have your textbook, you can look at this PowerPoint. All right, let's listen to the audio file again. Listening. An informal conversation. A. Listening for main ideas. Page 37. What's the matter, Dad? You look kind of upset. Well, I am kind of upset. Our energy bill is very high this month. Really? How much is it? <sighs> it's $400, which is a lot higher than usual. Wow! That sounds like a lot. Well, it is a lot. I'd really like to find ways to cut back on how much energy we use. Okay, let's take a look at the different answers in this audio file. When they discuss the different changes that they could make, they mentioned that they could change their light bulbs. They could start using solar energy, but hmm, did the father think this was a good idea? Not really. They also talked about eating cold food more often, keeping track of their energy use, taking shorter showers, turning the computers off at night, and not using the hair dryer. This is when the brother and sister started to fight a little bit. So, which ideas do you think are the most practical for this family? Which ones do you think wouldn't work so well? Great, now let's talk about today's grammar point. 
Today we are going to learn about modals of advice. So in our listening file, we heard the father talking about what they should do. What are some things that they ought to do to reduce their energy bill? So we're going to learn this, modals of advice. You can make a question or a statement. For example, should I talk to him? Yes, you had better talk to him. Yes, you ought to talk to him. Yes, you should talk to him. Or we can say no. No, you had better not talk to him. No, you ought not to talk to him. No, you shouldn't talk to him. We use models of advice to tell people what we think they should do, to give them advice or counsel about a decision. We also use should to talk about the right thing to do. For example, students should study hard. Everyone should save energy. These are common beliefs that we think are correct or that are right. When we use had better, this has a very strong meaning. We use had better to talk about warnings. It means that if we don't do that thing, there will be a negative consequence. So for example, you'd better study hard or you might fail the test. You'd better not fall asleep or you might miss the show. We never use had better for a question. We always use it for a statement, positive statement or negative statement, and the meaning is very strong. It might be helpful to look at some examples in your book. So look at the first sentence and try to choose the correct modal of advice. You can look at the second sentence to give you some context to decide if you should pick the positive or negative. Okay, take a moment to try this question by yourself and when you come back, we'll check your answers. All right, let's check your answers. Number one is already given to you. You should turn off your computer every night. You could save a lot of electricity. Number two, Tom had better not forget to turn off the lights. Last time he went away, he left them on for a week. In other words, don't forget to turn off your lights. Number three, we ought to call the energy company. I think there's a mistake on our bill. Number four, you really shouldn't drive your car to the store. It's only two blocks away. In Korea, I think many people enjoy walking to the store, and there are many marts everywhere, so it's very easy to do. In America, people will drive their car just one minute to buy one bag of potato chips and then drive back. It's very crazy now that I live in Korea, but in North America, Canada and America, People drive everywhere, and sometimes they live very far away from stores, so they have to drive. If you don't have a car in some parts of America, it's impossible to go anywhere. So, very good, Korea. Very easy, very convenient, and healthy. Okay, number five. We had better stop burning fossil fuels. It's bad for the environment. Okay, now let's review the three different models of advice. Should, shouldn't, ought to, ought not to, had better, had better not. You can see these uh, emojis on the side. They are different levels of intensity. So should or shouldn't is kind of general advice. Ought to or ought not to is a little bit stronger, like you really should or you really shouldn't. And had better, had better not is a strong warning. 
So let's practice making modals of advice out loud, speaking. I can't hear you through the video, but I would love for you to practice with me. I'm going to show you some pictures and we're going to make one positive sentence and one negative sentence to give advice about the coronavirus and how to stay healthy. Let's start with should, positive sentence. Mm. Water, two liters. Go ahead, try to make a sentence out loud. Okay, really good. Maybe you started your sentence like, you should drink. Very good. Let's take a look at an example. You should drink two liters of water a day. Water keeps you healthy. Being healthy boosts your immune system. Now let's make a sentence with shouldn't and this picture. Go ahead. Okay, great. Let's look at a sample sentence, shouldn't. You shouldn't smoke or you shouldn't smoke cigarettes. Researchers say that people who smoke now or smoked before have a much higher chance of developing severe symptoms when they have the coronavirus. So really, you shouldn't smoke. Okay, now let's start with ought to. Ought to, hmm, go ahead. Okay, good. Let's make a sentence together. You ought to wear a mask. Now we are making a stronger suggestion. You ought to wear a mask. People ought to wear a mask. Now, ought not to, hmm. Okay, good. Let's check our sample sentence. You ought not to shake hands. Don't touch people's hands and spread the virus. You ought not to shake hands. Okay, now let's get to the very serious warning. Had better, hmm. Okay, you had better wash your hands for 20 seconds. You need to wash for 20 seconds to kill the coronavirus. We can also make a contraction. You had better, you'd better. You'd better wash your hands for 20 seconds. Okay, last one. Had better not. Ooh. Okay, let's look at a sample sentence. You'd better not share drinks or food. Okay, I think this situation is pretty gross now in coronavirus times. Okay, great. So now you've made some modals of advice out loud and we practice the different levels of advice. Very casual, stronger, and then warnings. Okay. Today we're going to practice our models of advice in a kind of fun activity, and this is called, Am I the Asshole? So, maybe, oh, you can't see the logo. Maybe you've been on this website before, Reddit. Reddit is an American social news aggregation, web content rating, and discussion website. In other words, it's a website with everything. 
you can read the news, you can look at memes, you can talk to people about silly things and watch videos about cats and everything. On this website, they have different categories that you can look at. So for example, politics, videos, recipes, and AITA. Am I the asshole? So we're going to look at an example from this website. These are all real English used by real people on the internet. Uh, I don't know if they're American or from Canada or somewhere else, but they're using real English. So you might see some grammatical mistakes, and that's normal. First, before we look at the website content, I want to explain a little bit about the language that they use. So, on this page, am I the asshole? A person will tell a story. In this story, there was a big problem, but they don't know if they were wrong or the other person was wrong. Now they want advice. Am I the asshole or was the other person wrong? In the post, they use these terms. A-I-T-A. -A. Am I the asshole? Was I wrong? You might also see a number and a letter. This is the age and the gender of the person. So here, 33 years old, male or man, 33 year old man. In the first story, they mentioned that they are no contact with a person. No contact means that their relationship is over. They don't speak anymore. They don't send messages anymore. They don't exist anymore. No contact. They broke up. And OP is the original poster, the person who wrote the story and wants to hear some advice. So for this activity, which is part of your participation assignment, number one, you're going to read the Reddit post. It's a very short paragraph story. Then you're going to decide if the person who wrote the post was an asshole. And then finally, give some advice for the original poster. They use these terms on the website. The first one, not the asshole. You didn't do anything wrong. You were good in this situation and the other person was wrong. Number two, you're the asshole. You made a mistake. You should apologize and you should do something. Number three, everyone sucks here. All of the people in the story are bad. Everyone did something wrong and we should all apologize. And number four, no assholes here. No one did anything wrong. It was a mistake. It happened by accident and nobody is at fault. So you're going to read some real life stories and give some advice about what they should do. To do this participation work, please go to YSEC and click on the assignment. I've, I'm trying this new thing on YSEC, which is the assignment. If you click on it, you are going to see a simple worksheet. Read the stories, then give advice by writing sentences that use modals of advice. Should, shouldn't, ought to, ought not to, had better, had better not. When you click on the assignment in YSEC, it will look like this. So first, you'll see the worksheet. You can click on it and download it. After you write your answers, you can submit your document here. And I will see it with your name, the date, etc. Now, when you save the doc file, please include your name and student number because when I download everything onto my computer, then everything will get mixed together. So please always include your information. In the Word document, you can type the answer directly into the box. I made it very easy for you to fill in your answers. 
There's no word minimum, so please write as freely as you want. Also, try to include different types of modals of advice. So number one, should. Number two, ought to. Number three, had better not. Make a variety of modals of advice. Okay, so in summary, the work that you need to do this week includes the zero waste checklist and our little modals of advice writing assignment. Also, please don't forget that we need to complete the attendance quiz every week. If you missed a previous attendance quiz, unfortunately, they are closed, but it is still possible to get a good grade if you complete the attendance quiz every week. You have one week to complete all of your work as well. So really, you have a very good chance to get all of your points. Please take this opportunity. I really want to make it as easy for you as possible. Okay, then that's it for this week. Thank you so much for your hard work and have a great week.